Hello and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Today I thought I would put together a list of five simple things that you can do that will instantly improve your painting. Number one, don't work solely from your phone, tablet or computer screen if you are using a reference photo. I know it is very convenient to do this, but because screens are backlit, this will skew your colours. It will make it very hard for you to see temperature shifts that is warm to cool. Capturing these shifts correctly is essential for successful painting. I would recommend, if possible, to print out your reference photo, and if you can do this, print it at the same size as your canvas. This will help you to compare your painting to your photo more easily. I work with a number of photos. I have one the size of my canvas, which I pin to a wall about two meters from my easel. I have a smaller one, which I have next to my painting. And I have a black and white image that shows me my values on my iPad. Placing an image at a distance from your workstation will help you to see the larger blocks of value, color and temperature. If you are someone who gets lost in painting too much detail, this will give you an ability to be able to focus in and out on what you are painting more easily. Working with a black and white image to hand is also very useful as the eye struggles to see colour and value at the same time. By splitting these up, you separate the process and it will make it easier to get both correct. Number two, simplify your palette. If you are new to painting or you struggle with colour generally, limiting your palette is a really useful way to learn how to use colour and temperature whilst avoiding haphazard mixing. A good starting point is a palette like Zorn. This is ivory black, which can be used as a blue due to its blue colour leaning, white, yellow ochre and cadmium red. This palette is very good for painting animals and people. If you want a bit more colour in your palette for still life and landscape painting, you could try an extended Zorn palette. This then includes the additional colours of ultramarine, cadmium yellow and alizarin crimson. This gives you two yellows, warm and cooler, two reds, warm and cooler and two blues. By sticking with the same palette, you will learn colour mixing and also you'll find your paintings will be much more harmonious. Also, I will mention it is important to have enough paint on your palette to start with. Don't be stingy with how much you initially lay out. You will waste paint, it is inevitable. There is an optimum amount of paint you want on your canvas to effectively be able to manipulate it. Too much and you will lose control of your painting, too little and it will look patchy. At the end of a session, clean off your palette and then start again the next day with fresh paint. Fresh paint handles better. Number three, your brush selection is really important. You need to know what marks brushes make and also when to use them. For example, fill butts are a great all round workhorse of a brush. Blocking brushes are used specifically in the early stages of a painting. Coma brushes are great for painting animal fur. If you are attempting a la prima painting, it is important to know that as you progress into the painting, you will need to change brushes as stiffer brushes will just take the paint off the canvas. Also, it is important to vary your brush marks and size of brushes throughout your painting. Artwork painted with only one size of brush can look less interesting and a bit too uniform. If you vary the size of your brush, this will create contrast in your painting. Contrast creates interest. Number four, keep standing back from your painting during the painting process. Creating distance between yourself and your painting will help you avoid losing perspective of your painting and obsessing about one area. Remember that paintings are usually viewed from a distance once they are on the wall. Painting detail into an area does not mean the painting will work from a distance. Conversely, a few dodgy areas of painting can still hold up a painting that has a strong composition with correct value, edges, temperature and colour. Number five, use reference artwork to inspire you. I have printed artwork of both Anders Zorn and John Singer Sargent placed near my workstation. 
I love their brushwork and I am not naturally a loose painter. I find by continually reminding myself of how I want to paint, it helps keep my brushwork looser. Also, when I get stuck, I ask myself how they would have painted it and look to their paintings to tell me. There are lots of free high quality images that you can download from places like the Metropolitan Museum of Art website. They have a large selection of public domain images which are free to download and print to at least A4 size. I hope you have found today's video useful. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find examples of my work and also details of online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.